So in a previous video, I showed you how to very quickly mirror an object, and that's great, but how do I make it mirror dynamically with my edits? And that's this is next. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I don't super love this feature here because I like to have a little bit more control of my edge loops. However, that doesn't mean that you don't want to know that and that's okay. And honestly, I can actually see some really great uses for this. So I'm, I'm glad that we discovered this in class the other day. So what I want to do is I want to show you how we can mirror this and then still continue to edit while it updates and mirrors for us. So what do, what do I mean by that? Okay, well, first off, <clears throat> We're going to continue the same setup and make sure that we have the mirrored section to be at the zero value of at least one of our axes that we want to do. Usually X or Z. I very rarely want to mirror the Y so that I'm editing stuff up here and it edits down there. I mean, you can though, like if that's what you want to do. What's <laughs> more important though is that we understand where where our object lives. Now, from the previous video and as it sits currently, we have it at the positive X value. All right, so I know that much. Good to know. So let's go ahead and head up to this very particular tool, which I, 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 uh, it lives under edit <laughs> as opposed to edit mesh, mesh or mesh tools. <laughs> this is going to be under edit. Um, uh, I, I get really, I think I get a little anxious at the, like, what feels very random to me, the location of these tools. So don't forget that you could always dock whichever tools you use regularly on your custom shelf by hitting control shift click. Um, all right. Anyway, so <clears throat> what we're going to find here is the duplicate special tool. Now we want this dialog box. That's that little box right next to it. If we click that, it'll pop something up for us. Otherwise it'll just apply whatever default settings are here. And I can tell you by default, that's not what we want. We have to make a few extra edits, which is why I'm showing you this right now. So if we do the duplicate special options, this dialog box, we want to make sure that this is set to instance. Copying it will do very similarly to what the mirror tool just does for us. An instance is going to create um, an instance of an original object, and it means it will replicate any changes that we make to its parent object or its its relevant uh, reference. So that means we leave group under parent, right? And we come down here to set the scale. Now, by default, what you will see here is everything set 000, 000, 000 and 111. Now, the scale is where we have to get a little fancy math. Well, we want to duplicate this, but we want to duplicate it on the opposite of an axis. And what's a little unintuitive about this is that it doesn't label what these values are. It's just assumed that you know. I don't love that, but mm, it's pretty common. So usually what they're talking about when they give us a, a vector three value like this, where there's three values, especially for translate, rotate, and scale, they're assuming that you understand the order is X, Y, and Z. Ah, uh, I wish it said, but that's okay, we can accept it and we can just go ahead and move on. So I know that my object here, my, my cube, is on the X positive value. So that means I want to duplicate this on the negative. So if I just put a little negative right there and hit apply, now what I've got here is a very editable mirrored option for us so that we could go ahead and get a little weird. Now. When it comes to my hard surface modeling, I don't do this a lot, but I would definitely use this if I were sculpting, say, a face or an organic form that is very symmetrical, like a human form or human body. Okay, hope that helps.